comment, um, Mr. Victor Chivije. Okay, we, we're going back now to uh, you telling us about uh, your role mm. in Caps United. Mm. What is the difference between mm. Caps United manager, or, mm. or rather just a sport manager or a soccer manager, and the chairman? I think you need to break down a football club into two areas. Okay. One would be the playing staff, if mm. I can call it that, and one would be the administrative staff. Mm. So un under a professional football club, you would have a board of directors, which would be the what I would call the, the corporate governance body of, of a club, of a football club. Okay. Then under then underneath that, you'd have a CEO who would report into the board of directors together with the secretary. Now, okay. their main responsibility is really about the organizational side of it. And that's broken into things like match day, uh, ticketing, um, uh, accommodation-wise, transportation, um, salaries, uh, taxes, to etc., etc. So that's all covered by the administration side. Now, when you come now to the playing side of it, you have in this country we call the coach or the manager. Mm -hmm. Now, in effectively, in, in today's world, the manager effectively runs the football side of it. He's so completely the responsible. coach is also the manager. Or yeah, in different is. countries they call them. In, in, in the UK names. they call them managers, and some they call them coaches. It all depends what power they have. Mm -hmm. But in Zimbabwe, in particular, the the, the coach has complete power over. The, the players in terms of his selection of them, the training mechanism, the training methods. He's, he's, com he's ultimately completely responsible for the performance of the team. The, the chairman's role together with the secretariat is to give him all the tools and support they require to actually fulfill that task. Because at the end of the day, a player, all they should be worried about is playing football. They shouldn't be worried about the, the salary or et cetera, et cetera, or the injury and so on. They should all be sorted out by the club. And, and that's the type of environment or that's the relationship between them. Okay, and the relationship between the chairman and the owners of, of the actual... That, that can be a little bit more club. sticky, to be honest with you, because, uh, because the, the owners and the chairman yeah. may have different visions of where the club can go. Okay. And I think, uh, but it's all, obviously all of this happens behind closed doors. So I think I would say that what happens in a football club, the ordinary individual, the ordinary supporter in the street, probably only sees the football game, which is only about... 20 to 30 percent of what the actual club does. The other 70 percent, no one actually ever sees it because it's behind the scenes. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of information, a lot of knowledge that you have from behind the scenes that supporters don't have. They just come to a game, they want to watch you win, they want to watch you beat Dynamos or beat Islanders. Well, of course, I want to watch that too, yes, of course. Exactly. Yeah, um, they want to watch you win the championship. And, and I think there is a lot of hard work that goes in behind the scenes. Um, however, of course, the executive and and the, and the coaches are accountable if you lose. It's a fact. You know, it, it, football is a is a is a demanding sport. You don't perform, you don't you don't you're sacked. Simple as that. Okay, you you talked about supporters. Mm. Do you actually oh, sit down to 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 get to understand what the supporters want and maybe to take their advice? Oh yes. Oh, oh very much so. In <laughs> fact, um, even today, if I'm not mistaken, on the Caps United board is a supporter. A member of the supporters have elected a member who sits on the board of Caps United, the supporter. And he used to be in the old days the, 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 the national Caps United supporter. We have at Caps United supporter chapters all around the country. In every city we have a Caps United supporters club. And, and we made it our mission. I made it my mission not only to meet them all, but every time I'd go into a city, we'd arrange a meeting with all the supporters, whether it's before the game or after the game, even if it meant we went out for drinks or something after the game. And it was very important to me because um, people don't understand that without supporters, you do not have a club. It's as simple as that. You, know, you can be the, the biggest whatever club in the world. If no one comes to watch your games or no one's interested, what are you? Okay? And in fact, you're playing for them. When you win a championship, you're winning it for your supporters. You're, you're winning it for those people that have supported you to thick and thin. That is what the club is about. That is what everybody in a football club feels. And I just love cap supporters. It's nice supporters. I just think, honestly, and I've said it so many times, I think they're the best supporters that I, I've ever been around. They're just really nice people, all of them. And, and, um, and they know their football. They're really knowledgeable about that. And I like that too. I like to be able to have discussions based on football, not on emotion. And then this Caption United supporters do that, and I really like it. Thanks a lot, guys. Oh, wonderful. Thank you to the Caps United supporters. Oh, 100%. Um, coming to supporters again, I watch soccer. I, I have my also a team, international team that I, that I, um, I support. Yes, I know and a bad one. <laughs> Man United. Man United, United. yes. <laughs> Enough said. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know you're as an yeah. <laughs> At least we have something yeah. to talk about. There we go. All right. I get frustrated mm. when we lose a match. 
to the point of not wanting to talk to people at that particular time. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at you as the chairman of a team. When the team loses, mm -hmm. what happens? Mm -hmm. Do you get threats? social media. What happened? Because fr from that perspective, mm -hmm. I'm all the time I, I look at my team and it has lost. Yeah. I want to beat up someone. The coach didn't do it right, or the manager didn't do it right, or maybe the chairman or the board. Look, How do, do you take that? Let me do it in two different ways. Yes. You see, as a supporter, you're right. You lose and you feel, you know, you feel very sore. You feel yes. very heartbroken, so to speak. Okay. Yes. Um, the difference between a supporter and a chairman of a club is that the chairman can do something about it. So you can't. Okay. When, when, what you have this anger about losing and you need to express it at yes. something or yes. somebody yes. okay right and that's what you do and don't and trust me they don't uh, i don't know nowadays maybe social media i think but in football they wait for you at the stadiums and they tell you right there and then yeah yeah you don't you don't have to wait for, for social media to be or no, no no the threats are right there in the stadium but that's not the point uh -huh. the point is that that's valid, you know, as long as it doesn't generate into violence. I have no problem with people complaining or, or, or mouthing off or saying the coach is bad or whatever. That's 100% their, their right. But of course, I'm completely against football violence. I've been ever since. I've actually banned many people for life from perhaps games because of violence. But the difference is, is that that anger you can, you can direct at somebody. As, as a chairman or part of an executive of the club, mm -hmm. we, we cannot direct that anger to anybody mm -hmm. because in a way we're also responsible for the loss. So what we can do though so is we can... So you actually feel responsible? Of course we are. It's our club, it's we're responsible. The buck stops okay. with the chairman. So the, 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 what we can do, however, is, is analyze what's mm -hmm. happened, what went wrong, what, what was the issues behind this, you know, um, and, and fix them. And that's how we can make an impact on, on not losing mm -hmm. next week, mm -hmm. whereas the supporter you know, he loses, he doesn't lose. If he loses, he's going to be sick, or, but he's going to have to blame someone. And most of the time, sure, you blame the coach, blame the players, blame the executive, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Mm -hmm. I think that's everyone's right. Um, and sure enough, that's why football is a harsh game. You know, football chairman, football ma coaches, football managers, they leave all you the take time. take all the blows. Oh, yeah, and you take, well, yeah, of course you do. It's what, it's, what you're, it's what you're paid to do, so to speak. Mm -hmm. so, but I'm in happy the midst of all that, you still get support from the, from, from the owners, or they also just put the blame on you as the chairman or, um, or it's, as the coach? You know, I, I always say, look, if you're gonna, you, you've got to do your best. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You can't be worrying about what other people are going to say about you or, or what impression you're going to give them. You've got to do your best. You've got to yes. listen to everybody mm -hmm. to gather the information you require. Mm -hmm. Do your best. Implement it. Okay? If it isn't good enough, you know, look, at the end of the day, all you can do is your best. That's all you can do. You can work extra hard to do your best. And if certain circumstances doesn't allow that mm -hmm. and the owners don't like the direction you're taking in the team, they have the right to remove you. But at the end of the day, you know, that's the fact. The fact is this. You get knocked down, you keep on going. Mm -hmm. You you lose, you look at winning the next match. Uh, you you finish, I don't know, 15th in the one season, doesn't mean you, you're going to go for the Premier League title the next. And that's important. It's about that. It's that ambition to keep going, the ambition to get knocked down and be able to always stand up and carry on going. And that's important in anyone's life. And I think I think that is the type of message that I would like to get across to people, the fact of, mm -hmm. of that, you know, always persevere in times of adversity, things will come right, you know. Always work hard. Always understand that, yeah, I think life is not going to be okay all the time, mm -hmm. but live through it and keep on going yes. and don't let it get you down. And I think that is the only way people are going to be successful in whatever they do, football included. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a few um, other comments that just came in. Matbet Nkomo Mataga, Sodawa Eni Mira. Thank you for the comments. Thank you very much. Uh, and then we have uh, Bekitemba Sabula Mpofu. She said she's tuned in. Thank you very much. Um, and then we have Ivan Tarav Taraguta, who just joined us. Thank you for joining us. And then we have Bridget G and Sam Knox. Thank you very much for joining us. Mm. Natasha. Natasha says you are very... Stacy V. Chiwa says, Natasha, you are very right. Um, it, I'm sure the comment from Natasha is, is, is mm. up somewhere there. Um, mm. All right. So... I would like to know, right now we have so many soccer players that are leaving the country mm. and, um, and, and going obviously to look for greener pastures. Why do you think is the reason? Um, at the end of the day, football players like anyone need to, need to further their career. Mm -hmm. okay? And you, you know, playing in Zimbabwe, you can only achieve two major things. You can either get to play for one of the major clubs in the country mm -hmm. and hopefully 
touch with you, you get the ultimate uh, ultimate accolade of just playing for your country. Because at the end of the day, playing for Zimbabwe is, the, is, the, is ultimate. Mm -hmm. okay, that's what you want to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. However, if you then want to go into a bigger stage, play against bigger teams, mm -hmm. or play against bigger, get into bigger leagues, you need to find another league to go to. And of course, one of the problems that our players face is the ability to get into Europe. If you get into Europe, you have to meet certain quotas that you have to play the national team, yes. so many, so many percentage, and so forth. So it makes sense for our players to start looking at pastures within Africa. So you start hearing about Saudi Arabia, Egypt, South Africa, Kenya, Tanzania has come up now, and, and our players are going out there. And and quite frankly, we should support them. Um, we need to get more of our players playing out there, playing different in different leagues playing against different styles, playing against different players. It's important for our game nationally. And so, I, so, so that is one of the major reasons why. I mean, for me, sure, people can say it's the money, they get paid better and so forth. But I think if you talk to a football player, sure, you can say the money may be important. But actually, to a football player, they want to be able to get to the next level. The next level where they want to see if they can play in a, in a really good team and then hopefully get into a European team or a Premier League team or whatever. Um, just like uh, the great Peter and Lovu did and so on and then Benjani. And, and that is the goal of every football player who should be. Um, the same way our, the, our young man there, Kamabili, the same yes. thing. He's playing for a great team in South Africa mm -hmm. and he needs to move. He needs to go to another team in Europe so he can get to another level. And that's what a football player should be doing. So that, that's the major reason why players leave. The problem is, is that uh, do we have people on our conveyor belt coming through our programs that can replace them? And so if you have this outflux of players and they've been replaced by the same players who are there and there's no new talent coming in, then you start getting stagnation of football or you start getting what they would call standards going down. And people say that. You know, it was more exciting a couple of years ago than today. And, and so that's what you need. That's why you need this vibrant development program. So as much as players are leaving you, new stars are being born in the country. And that is what's important. And, and that's, that's the message I keep on pumping down to all the people, football I meet, is that unless we focus on development and we get development football correct, unless we start getting talent coming through, there's only so much of a limit that we can keep on going with the existing talent before your standards do start dropping. And that is my concern. And I want to maintain those standards, make them better, and really create a team at the national level, not just at the club level, but at the national level, which, which can beat anyone. And we can beat anyone. It's a fact. I mean, when you look at the club level, I mean, Caps United, we beat Zamalek. Now, Zamalek is the number one ranked team in Africa. And we beat them 3-0 in our home ground, yeah? So, uh, you know, it's doable. We beat Tipi Mazembe, who I think is ranked number two in Africa. So it gives you an idea that, that the talent and, and, and the skills are there. The key now is, again, to convince people that we're that good, to get it into our psyche that we are that good, get the right players assembled, get all the right administrative structures in place. And why not? Why can't we be one of the top countries in, in, in Africa, if not the world? Why can't we be in the top 50 in the world? And do you think that the corporate um, um, fraternity right now in Zimbabwe is, is, is playing um, a pivotal role in, in mm. as far as support for, in, for soccer is concerned? Mm. I, I, no, they aren't. And I think there's a good reason for that. I mean, football... Why do you think that? Well, corp corporates want to get value for the money that they put okay. into sponsorship. It, it's about, you know, there was a brand must must reflect. If you put money into a brand, you also want to see it reflected in terms of income for yourself. You know, um, you know uh, Barclays and so forth don't, didn't use to sponsor the Premier League for free. They did it because it got their name out worldwide. Five billion people knew who Barclays Premier League was. That's what they called it, you see. So, so it's important. So the problem was that we have gone through the last couple of years a lot of chaos in football, a lot of um, 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 bickering, internal fighting and so on. And I think really it settled down ever since uh, uh, Philip Changwa came in recently, but but up to then there was a lot of chaos, and, and and no sponsor wants to associate their name or put their name onto a brand which is which is uh, covered in chaos. It, it hurts you, you know, where where there, there are games where they're being, being stopped because of hooliganism or people invading the pitch. It hurts your brand. So how do you think the brand can be can be? Um Revamped. Oh, it, it can be. Of course, it can be revamped. It, it's it's about making the sponsors understand that, that, that the association and football has been run professionally. Mm -hmm. It's been run on a purely on the corporate go go governance guidelines are in. Mm -hmm. um, things are done right. Hooliganism stands out. You have to make the a brand attractive. And sure, it, it, of course, it can be done. In fact, mm -hmm. football is one of the largest money makers in the entire world. So why in Zimbabwe can't it be if the rest of the world is doing it? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it doesn't make sense. So of course, it can. And I and I hope that that is exactly what. The, the football leadership is doing there. They're, they're creating a brand. And look, we do have some great supporters. I think Prophet Magaya is a very big supporter of football. I mean, he, uh, he, 
he really loves football, and I like that about him. And he's put his money where his mouth is. He looks after the national teams at his hotel. He sponsors them and so forth and bonuses. And he's done, he's, you know, of all, of, of all the corporates, if I can call Prophet Maguire a corporate or an individual who's come forward and sponsored football, or at least really tried to make the better of football, he has. And, and, and for that, I, I'll, always, I'll always applaud him for that. Yeah. Okay, so you, you were in Zimbabwe for... for um, um, it's Okay, we're oh, yeah, here, yeah. yes, forever. Mm -hmm. And then you moved, um, mm -hmm. and then you came back just recently. I did, yeah. What what inspired your move back to Zimbabwe? Um, to be honest, you know, I, I, I always say this to people that you know, I know that a lot of our, our, our fellow Zimbabweans in diaspora, okay, yes. and I, I, I suppose, went into the diaspora, in fact, it was Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur, and I went there. And, and one thing I realized after a time is that, one, you're very alone, you know, it, it, particularly when you go to you Asia. Alone, yeah, in Asia, there is yes, very definitely. few Zimbabweans or anything like that, you know, apart and from the embassy. And, and, and you don't have sadza. And I was, I was telling someone, I think I had sadza. Was it three times in seven can years? Can you cook sadza? Yeah, um, I can. Yeah, my mum taught me. Yeah. Plus, nice. I had, plus, I went and did cooking courses. So oh, I'm beautiful. like the perfect husband to be. And then, um, so, so then single. I, <laughs> so then I, um, and so I got very lonely. And also, I think that was number one. But number two, I didn't move with my family. All my my, my children were here, and um, I, I, uh, I had the grandkids. I had two grandkids, so mm -hmm. it was important for me to come home and, and be with them. Mm -hmm. And so that was really my driving force. Okay. And I always tell people that you know I understand going to diaspora. I understand the reasons that people did it, mm -hmm. and you know. But I tell you, you know, you, if you don't come home and something missing in your life somewhere always mm -hmm. and my decision was to come home and uh, and and relocate back which is yeah which is unusual i suppose but it suited me all right beautiful so right now are you getting back into 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 soccer full-time mm -hmm. and, and what can we expect from you um, um look are yeah you going to see a change in the sport arena um look I, and from my my perspective of course i'm, I'm always with caption i think that that can't that can't go away i believe i'm uh, I'm one of the few people in football that could probably never join any other football club except Caps United. Um, but I think I would like to, I'm getting more involved in the development side. We are, we are looking at a um, academy that's going to be set up now, um, which I'm working with some partners on. Um, that, because I, you know, if I'm going to talk development, let me walk it. I've got to also be doing something in development to make it happen. So that's what I'm going to be doing. But that's just what I call, you know, I, I think people must appreciate that soccer is just a small part, part of my life. Mm -hmm. My other part is to set up my own businesses here. I'm setting up a business on people, a financial services type business, and that's coming along really well. So it will be, it will, it will be quite intensive and quite busy. But, uh, but yeah, um, once you, once you're into football and you live and you breathe football, you can't really, um, you can't really get out of it. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a fantastic sport. It's a sport that, that, that unites everyone. It's a sport where you leave your problems at the door. Uh, you go in and you shout and scream for 90 minutes. Your team wins and loses. You, uh, you discuss with your, your wife, your kids, your in different houses. I mean, I have friends where their wife is dynamos, their husband is caps, you know, and, and it's fantastic. You know, you can imagine that that's like the day after a game. You know, but, but, and that's what I love about the game. I just love that inclusiveness of everybody, where everybody can be part of it and, and really just enjoy this beautiful game. And, and, and that's what it is. It's a beautiful game. All right. Um, you talked about financial management mm. before. What advice can you give to the players? They, they're superstars at one point. In soccer, we should face it. It's very short-lived. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens to them financially after that? Mm -hmm. Any advice that you can give mm -hmm. them from, from yeah. a banking point of view? Yeah. Um, and as far as their financial status is concerned yeah. and how they can manage their careers and manage their money and yeah. so that they can have something to fall back on after soccer. I, I, think, I think this advice I assume would go to anyone. I don't think it applies to soccer. Uh -huh. I think if I can relate it to soccer though, I mean, we talked about stuff like insurance. Uh -huh. um, in, in the case of a soccer player, it's literally that simple to break your leg. Uh -huh. And just breaking your leg in one game uh -huh. at 22 years old, you can never play football again. Yet, yet all you've done since you were 16 to 22 is play football mm -hmm. and now you can't play football and the problem when you have a broken leg for example is that the club your contract lapses and then the club sometimes can move, walk away from you and not look after you and so we, we talk about things like insuring themselves 
making putting putting down um, particularly things like looking after your 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 key areas of your life, which is your home, your your accommodation. That that's important. Mm -hmm. Okay. We also talk about how do they manage it in the sense of do they set it up as a trust fund? Do they mm -hmm. set it up as individuals. Mm -hmm. The kind of stuff that players wouldn't 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 know about. Okay. So so we offer that advice. We offer that advice to the club. You know how much they should save and how what they should put it into to get the maximum return. Mm -hmm. We this is what we tell them. However, of course, at the end of the day, um, you know, like anything, it's your money. What you do with your money. You do with your money. It, it, all we can do is advise you and help you and hope that you, you take some advice. And um, but I will say that of the players that have become, or I can say, have become a lot, who are more financially stable. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting, but they've also had very strong wives or partners, and, and I found that's very important in a player's life in the sense that you know you can go to a stadium and be a star where 10,000, 20,000 people are calling your name, yes. okay, and, and it can be quite intoxicating, mm -hmm. you know, and it's really good to leave there and go into a home with a nice, you know, with a proper wife who supports you, mm -hmm. with great kids, in a great family environment with people around you, and it kind of centers you a, and you appreciate that your work, you're playing football as a job for this family that you have, mm -hmm. and, and those I've noticed that go a little bit off the rails are more the single guys who don't do that, where they're going home, they're going back to the high fields, wherever they live, shooting weeds, wherever they live, and people are coming to their place, and they take them out for drinks, and they, you know, and that's and the worst sense for a football player. Money. Yeah, they blow their money, but worse mm -hmm. than that, they start drinking, smoking, and you know in football, you do not touch anything like that, it just destroys your, it destroys your stamina and your game, but that is what you can be enticed to. Um, when you go back home after a match and you score two goals against Dynamos, imagine you go back to the game There's thousands of people at your house waiting for you and they're willing to all buy you drinks and and so they, they need, The players need to understand that that barrier between the fact that playing football is a, is a job It's what you're good at. It's what you were chosen by God to do and you're very good at it Yeah, yes. and, and you have to also preach however that it's a public job Which means that people will try and destroy it if they can or or at least or, or hope think by by giving you extra love they actually destroy it so to speak and so the players must be also guarded against that the do you ability have to manage a their support life. system mm. to, to to guard the players um in, in, to, to give them advice like that on a daily do you, oh 100 i mean yeah look i had, I had two very very good um, um, um colleagues with me at caps uh, ziambi ziambi mm -hmm. and willard manyagawana who is now the head of division one northern region he's now the chairman of that and uh, ziambi ziambi is the MP, MP yes, yes. and very close friends of mine and mm -hmm. we would literally every weekend uh, we would drive to each player's house and go into their house and sit with them talk to them um, we encourage them if they had problems whether there be family problems or any type of problems of course we get involved with help them um, so the club became a family that is what caps united is it's a family and and that's what it should be it should be a place that you you can rely on anyone to look after you, you can rely on your executive to look after you, you can rely on your team to look after you and support you. That is what makes a successful club and that's what we try to incorporate in Caps United. And, and I hope, I hope, I mean, I, I don't know, but I think that we achieve that very well. Mm -hmm. Back to the comments, there's mm -hmm. Bridget G and Bridget Machinga, they are watching. Thank you very much for watching. And then Bridget G says, Andy Hodges, full stop. Ah, and then she also you. says, <laughs> Thank you for trying. It'll work out good. I hope camera shots can improve as well. It is a first show. Happy for you. Strong girl. Good going. Thank you so much, Bridget V. And then we also have Mukepepe Mukuru who just joined us. Thank you so much for joining us. My last yeah, question. Sure. If you were to, to change anything in sport, in mm -hmm. soccer to be quite precise, what would you change? Hmm. That is a very good question. Um, if I had to change anything in football in Zimbabwe, what would I change? Mm -hmm. I would change the way that the people in football look at it. I think that people are not yet f do not yet fully look at football and see what its full potential can be. Um, mm -hmm. They don't look at football further than you know what's happening today when they should be looking at a bigger picture and what football can actually do, not just from a monetary perspective, but also from a social, 
uh, uh, responsibility type perspective because uh, even getting the kids out there playing football you know I think I think people need to move their minds away and we need people that are more big picture players who, who can see and have a plan for where our football should be going and then be able to direct it that way rather than what we have now which is really individual teams all trying to do their best and they are doing their best mm -hmm. and playing football and they're waiting for the next season so they're only looking at season by season what we need is a bigger picture and i think that i would like to see that more in football I'd like to see people looking more more uh, in, a, in a future vision but i'm talking now about zimbabwean football i'm not concerned about the Saka, yeah. calf we yeah start here let, let them deal with that we yes. start with without our base being strong it doesn't matter the rest and and, and i'm really glad that the, the zifa president for example has, has become kusafa chairman and he's now in the calf uh, africa nations cup board and so on and so forth like, fantastic it's great for our football <laughs> however we need to change everybody's perceptions in football in Zimbabwe and, and then how do we better that here? How, what, what programs do we put in place to make that better? What, because we must have a goal, we must know what do we want to be and then once we get there how do we maintain it? And that is what I would try and change if I had a chance. Okay, given that opportunity because you're also part of this so that was your last question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get more difficult questions. Oh, it's still the last question. It's still okay. the last question. There was a comment there. Uh, oh, yes. okay. <laughs> You are part of soccer in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and you play a very pivotal role. Uh, so if we're talking about changes that's going to happen, you are also part of that change. 100%. And, and you as, as a former chairman and everything that you've done um, um, here in Zimbabwe and outside, in, you know, abroad, don't you think also you need to play a part? in as far as the change is concerned? I, I don't think it's just me. I think everybody does. You know, mm -hmm. um, this attitude that it's somebody else's problem, let them fix it. I, I hate that attitude. I, I think that, I think if you can, and you have an opportunity to, then try, you know, talk, say something. Um, I, I think, I think, you know, what do they say? That, that e evil men triumph when good men keep quiet. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what it is about. It's about that you cannot expect people to be doing things or improving things if you keep quiet and then you criticize them for not doing them. Um, I, you know, I don't listen to people like that because I say to them, okay, you criticize me for not doing that, so what should I have done? And they can't answer you. So if you can and you play a part, and you're 100% right. If I am involved in football and, and if I am... If I have some sort of influence in it, then sure, I should also be working towards the things I've talked about. And that's exactly what I will do, 100% right. Wonderful. We are talking to Andy Hodges. Thank you so much for joining us at Masua Talk Show here on ZimDI TV. Comment, um, Mr. Wood. At Sly Media Productions, we offer live streaming services to companies willing to reach a worldwide audience. We have the capacity to live stream debates from various locations for a wide range of clients. And our online uh, audience, we welcome you back. We follow them and help build Zimbabwe brand on a positive note. On uh, the second report on citizens' perceptions. And for us, our interest has always been around how do we leverage technology to communicate policy, to communicate public issues. <laughs> When you think of reaching the ever-growing internet audience with your video adverts, think Sly Media TV online. If you want to pre-package TV programs, documentaries, weddings and church services, think Sly Media Productions, Building Bridges, your TV on the go, anytime, anywhere, worldwide.